Let's tackle table four. Uh, in table four, uh, where it's our sum summary results table. Again, these are my results, so I'm just showing you how to do the calculations, how to do the procedures. You're doing these all on your own to get your own data. But to fill in the temperature table, um, you just have to, or row, you just have to go back to each of these and let's see, 19.5 for the pipette. And that should say one milliliter. 19.5 degrees Celsius. And then for the second one, it was 19.2. And this third one was 19.6 degrees Celsius. Now uh, we need our actual, the rest of our handout because we're gonna go back to that table in the lab on page two, I think, no, three, four, on page four. So on page four for 19.5 degrees, it's going to be 19.5, 0 0.998305. in units of grams per milliliter. And I do need you to write all of the significant figures there because that's just how accurately it is known. At 19.2, I get 0 0.998365. And at 19.6, 0 0.998285. All right, um, so second row done. Please make sure you have some of your temperatures uh, exactly in there. Now for the experimental average, I have to go ahead and take my three values for the pipette, which were 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 0.9 using one sig fig. Actually, it makes a lot of sense to go back and, and use two sig figs then, because they're not all the same. So I'm going to go back and do that, 0 0.90 and 0 0.91, because they're not the same number. So uh, I've just found a reason to keep the extra, the calculator value for this one. That's a 9. There we go. So now to take the average, it's going to be 0.93 plus 0.9 plus 0.91. I get 2.74, 0 0.9133333. And I will just keep three sig figs there, still underlining the first one, and that's grams per milliliter. Averaging my second one, so uh, for my graduate cylinder, I got 0 0.997 plus 0.999, plus 0.995. I could do this too, but I'm gonna just keep the three sig figs. Either way will work for me. Three, 0.997. So either way works. And this one does have three sig figs. There's nothing to underline because all three of those are significant. Now, volume measured with beaker, 0.95 plus 0.98 plus 0.92 divided by three, 0 0.95. Now let's talk standard deviation. For standard deviation, I'm going to go ahead and use Microsoft Excel. I've got a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet up here. And for standard deviation, so uh, maybe your calculator does it. If that does, great. Um, when I grade your uh, uh, labs, I'm gonna actually uh, have you put them into a Google Sheet and then my Google Sheet will check or and then send it to me as an Excel file. And then I will check all of your data using my own spreadsheet. 
so uh, we're working on the uh, standard deviation of the pipette. So I need my three values. Oop, there we go. And then the command in Microsoft Excel is equals to tell Excel that you're doing math. STDEV, open parenthesis, and then click and highlight all your numbers, all three of them. Close a parenthesis, and then hit enter. And your standard deviation is 0 0.015. Uh, standard deviations always have one significant figure. Um, and I just held up my finger of one, even though you can't see it. So we're going to round this to equals 0 0.02. Because it does round that way. There we go. So 0 0.02 would be the standard deviation. Standard deviations are always reported to one sig fig. And you can round, and they're also always reported plus or minus. All right. Uh, and what's interesting is uh, that this is in the hundredths place, but we only have one sig fig in the tenths place. And this fact, when I realized this, is what led to lab number two. So you're going to be doing lab number two. We're actually going to be calibrating the one milliliter pipette. And that's because the one milliliter pipette is not, it, well, we'll talk more about that. But for now, for this one, 0.997, well, let's enter in our three values. 0 0.997, 0 0.999, and 0 0.995. So this is grad cylinder, 0 0.997, 0 0.999, 0 0.995. Now uh, you can type the formula in again, but if I copy and paste this one, it will reference these three values, which is exactly what I wanted to. And I get 0 0.002. And that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.002. And the third one for the beaker will be similar. Uh, let's go ahead and do it because I have to rank precision. Uh... Well, uh, I think, hate to say it, but it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.03. Um, now, ranking precision, uh, most precise has smallest standard deviation, STDEV. The smallest one is here, so this is the most precise. Then our next precise and then our least precise, if you will. And that's not surprising. The beakers are oftentimes the least precise. That's why we almost never actually measure anything for a reaction in a beaker. We use beakers to hold chemicals, not to measure them. And the pipette, as I mentioned, is actually um, pretty precise. And uh, we are going to do a whole nother lab to make it the most precise possible in uh, lab two. Percent error. Percent error, now let's talk about that. So percent error is experimental value minus correct divided by correct times 100%. I'll do one of those for you. So it's gonna be percent error is gonna be 0 0.913. That's with one sig fig uh, gram per milliliter minus 0 0.998305 grams per milliliter over 0 0.998, good, I'm on the screen, grams per milliliter times 100%.
and uh, percent error can be positive, it can be negative. It'll be negative in this case, so 0 0.913 minus 0 0.998305. I have to get equals on my calculator next to keep order of operations. Then divide by 0 0.998305 times 100. And I get minus, well, since this only has one sig fig, I'm going to have minus 9% error. And for the other ones, I can assure you they're going to be smaller because these values are closer. And what I would find is that, um, oh, so as far as most accurate, the most accurate has the percent error closest to zero, either positive or negative. And all of these are negative because all of these average values are less than the correct value. Although 0.997 and 0.998, I, I have to say without even doing it, I know that my graduated cylinder is going to be the most accurate as well. And I will let the rest for you to do. Please ask any questions you have.